Women's Rights in Islam, a comparative overview of Western countries versus Islamic law. A major noteworthy achievement of Islam is the freedom of women. Due to the lack of access to the original sources of Islamic law and various other reasons, many strange minds assume that Islam discriminates against women. These women are the subjects of studies and fantasies, but never the narrators of their own story. These myths directly impact the daily lives of the women, which are deeply rooted in the society amplified by the media and encouraged by the politicians. Unfortunately, misrepresentation by self-proclaimed Islamic governments and terrorist organizations such as ISIS, Al-Qaeda and Taliban has unequivocally increased the misgivings. However, the reality is that neither these terrorist organizations nor any other pseudo-Islamic systems for that matter comply with the prophetic model implemented in the state of Medina. Women's rights in the West. Shaykh al-Islam Dr. Muhammad Tahir al-Qadri provided a brief overview of the development of women's rights and the elimination of gender discrimination in the West vis-a-vis -vis the prophetic model in this book, Peace, Integration and Human Rights. As a matter of historical facts, in Western world, a woman was not ever considered a legal person as early as 20th century. Roger Cotterell proffers a definition of a legal person in his work, The Sociology of Law, stating, a legal person or legal subject defines who or what the law will recognize as a being capable of having rights and duties. The one who possesses legal rights and duties is known to be the legal person. Development of women's rights in Britain 1897, women in Britain began their political and social struggle to attain recognition as legal personnel and to attain the right to vote with the formation of the National Union of Women's Suffrage by Millicent Follett. 1903, this union was further strengthened by the Women's Social and Political Union. 1918, after immense struggle, the Representation of People Act sanctioned women over the age of 30 to vote, while men were allowed to vote at 21 years and those in army at 19 years. Development of Women's Rights in the U.S. A similar account of discrimination and subsequent struggle is found in the United States of America. 1776, the U.S. Declaration of Independence makes no reference at all to women's rights. In fact, Richard Nelson, a famous American historian called the Dean of Lincoln Scholars, remarks that in colonial society, a married woman had virtually no rights. The revolution did nothing to change this. 1872, the discrimination against women was of such intensity that Susan Anthony, the champion of women's rights activism in the U.S. was jailed for casting a vote in the presidential election. Since being a woman, she had no legal right to do so. 1919, after much struggle, discrimination on the basis of gender was de jure abolished through the 19th Constitutional Amendment. Development of women's rights in France. Eighteen forty eight, democracy declared in France. Nineteen forty four, women allowed to vote after almost a century of suppression and struggle. Development of women's rights in various other countries. Australia, 1921, women were allowed to vote. New Zealand, 1893. Norway, 1907. Denmark 1915 
Germany 1918. Austria 1919, Canada 1919, Netherlands 1919. Belgium 1919 Switzerland 1971 Ireland 1980 Luxembourg 1919, Spain 1931. In general, women were neither recognized as legal subjects nor granted the right to vote until the late 19th or early 20th century and history is very clear about that. Women's rights in Islamic law 14 centuries ago. Interestingly, women were declared legal personnel in Islamic law over 14 centuries ago. You'll be surprised to know that they were given the right to vote and partake in the political process of the day. The Quran states, O Prophet, when the believing woman appear in your presence to take the oath of allegiance that they will not set up anything as partner with Allah and will not steal nor will they commit adultery or kill their children or bring false blame which they have invented between their hands and feet that is will not deceive their husband declaring someone else's baby as born to her or disobey you in what is right, then accept their allegiance that seek forgiveness for Allah for them. And Allah surely is most forgiving, ever merciful. While developing the structure of Islamic State, several ladies were brought in as active participants in the state. Women were appointed as members of the parliament, officers and administrators in the administrative structure of the state of Medina. Muslim women held prominent roles in early Islamic history. One of the greatest examples of intellectual freedom enjoyed by Muslim women is Aisha Radiallahu the noble wife of Holy Prophet Aisha Radiallahu was a true polymath for not only was she an exemplary hadith master, she was also a specialist in jurisprudence, history, literature and astronomy. Umm Sulaim, mother of Hazrat Anas bin Malik, performing duties in the Battle of Uhud in the life time of Holy Prophet Read by Muslim in his As-Sahih, it has been narrated on the authority of Umm Atiya, the answer right, I took part with the Messenger of Allah in seven battles. I would stay behind in the camp of men, cook their food, treat their wounded and nurse the sick. Relayed by a Sirmizi in his Sunan, Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu narrated that Holy Prophet peace be upon him said, Verily, women can give legal protection to the whole community and that would be considered valid by the state. Zainab now granted protection to her husband Abu Al-As and the state accepted this. Shifa bint Abdullah Adawiya was appointed as a judge of accountability court and market administrator in the reign of the second rightly guided caliph Umar bin Abdul Khattab. Umm Fulsum, daughter of Hazrat Ali bin Abi Talib, was sent in 28th Hijri as an ambassador to the Queen of the Roman Empire. In general, women were pivotal contributors to the formation of the Islamic society. One of the most effective roles women fulfilled was in parliament where female members spoke eloquently about issues confronting women. Umar Radiallahu wished to pass a bill to limit the amount of dowry that could be paid to a woman. A female member of the parliament voiced her disagreement, exclaiming, 
do you wish to limit the dowry o umar when allah has not umar radiyallahu anhu requested evidence and she responded with the verse of the quran with lady sukaina daughter of husain ali was an expert in literature and poetry samra bin ziyadat aisha al bayaniya maymuna bin saad were experts on poetry literature and various fields of knowledge sayyid shahida who died 5 years after the migration to madina was an expert in literature and history Fatima bin Ali bin Hussein was an expert in humbly legal tradition and numerous Islamic scholars received knowledge from him. Hassan al-Basri received knowledge from Rabia al-Qasisiyah. Sharifa Fatima was the governor of Yemen, Sana and Najran. Shifa bin Abdul Mahzumiya was a judge of the court in the days of Umar radiyallahu anhu. Hanifa Khanun, the niece of Sultan Salahuddin Ayyubi, was the governor of Halab. Muslims women participated in all fields of life. There were women who championed educational and cultural efforts like Fatima al-Fahiri, others who excelled in mathematics such as Sutaita al-Mahamili. Others played key political roles and ruled important territories in the Muslim civilization. Some of those included Labana of Cordoba of 10th century Spain, Sitt al-Mulk of 11th century Egypt, Melika Mama Hatun of 12th century Turkey, Razia Sultana of Delhi of 13th century India and many more. There are abundant historical examples of this nature which give us the insight into the political, social and legal status enjoyed by the female citizens of the Medinan states and onwards in the Islamic society in general. On the contrary, such rights were accorded to women in the West merely a hundred years ago after decades of relentless struggles. And we believe that addressing these misinformation as misconception jointly will reinforce mutual trust in the society and hope this will contribute to promoting more coalitions against those trying to pit groups against each other and stuff. Do let us know how do you like the videos and if all these information were new to you.